This is math uh, 152. We're going to look at section 1.5, integrated by substitution. And before we do, um, I want to do this derivative. And then we'll try to undo the derivative uh, by integrating. So I'm going to think of this as um, 1 fourth times x squared plus 3 to the fourth power. And then the, I'm taking the derivative of that. Again, I'm doing this to see where the piece is coming from. Notice I have a function inside a function. I have this x squared plus 3 inside the 4. So I'm going to have to do a chain rule. So I have 1 fourth times, take the derivative of something to the fourth power. That's 4 times that something to the third power. Times the derivative of this thing that's in there, which is 2x. Uh, 1 fourth times 4 is 1. So I end up with x squared plus 3 to the third power times 2x. Okay, so notice I started with this, took the derivative I got there. So I'm not going to think about going the other way. I want to take the integral of x squared plus 3 to the third times 2x dx, uh, right, relative to x. So thinking about this, um, I'm seeing those pieces, like, and I can actually, I know where the pieces came from. I just did the derivative, right? But what I want to illustrate is this technique called substitution. And in this technique, you want to you want to notice that there's a function inside another function. Like this x squared plus 3 is inside cubing. And so we're going to say mathematicians, one of their favorite words, let u equal x squared plus 3. So I'm going to let u stand for this x squared plus 3. Now here is, um, here's my next part. I'm going to take the derivative of that. The derivative of u now is 2x times dx relative to x. So that's kind of interesting because now, see, I have some pieces in here. There's my 2x dx. Like this is the same as du. And my x, plus th uh, x squared plus 3, that's the same as u. So I'm going to rewrite this integral as u cubed, right? Because this is u cubed. And then du is all this, du. Oh my gosh, that's so easy to do now. So let's see, the derivative of that is uh, 1 fourth u to the fourth plus some constant. So then now what I can do is I can kind of awaken from this little fever dream of substitution. I know what u is. U is um, x squared plus 3, so this would be 1 fourth x squared plus 3 to the fourth power plus some constant, and notice that that is what I started with. So this is the idea with substitution. Substitution, you know, it doesn't always work, but, uh, you know, if we're in the right sandbox, it will. Um, so what I can do is let that equal that. Uh, function inside a function, I let u equal the part that's inside there, and then I go ahead and do it. So I'm, I'm going to try some of these. I got some ready-made for me to do. So this first one, um, I've got this integral cosine uh, of x squared times 3x squared dx. So I notice I have x cubed inside cosine. So let's see what happens. Let u equal x cubed. All right, so if u is equal to x cubed, the derivative of u is 3x squared d, uh, relative to x dx. Right, I basically I'm doing like chain rule again, like derivative of 3x of, of x cubed and then the derivative of x. So let's do some substitution. u is x cubed, so I'm going to have cosine of u, and then 3x squared dx is du, so this can all get replaced with du. Oh, that's lovely. So then now what I can do is uh, take that integral, integral of cosine is sine, so sine u plus some constant, and then now I'm going to remember, oh yeah, use x cubed, so sine x cubed plus c. And if you're ever not sure if you did it right, take the derivative of this, and you should get that back. All right, let's do another one. Um, I noticed I have x, uh, 3x squared plus 4 to the fourth power. So like this is inside that function something to the fourth. So let's see what we can do. Let u equal this thing that's in here. So the derivative of u then 
is uh, 6x dx. Nice. Look, I have that 6x dx, so that's my du. This is my u, so I'm going to have that integral of u to the fourth power, and the 6x dx is equal to du. Cool. So now I can do that derivative. Uh, I'm sorry, that integral, which is 1 fifth u to the fifth plus c. I know what u is. U is that. So I'm going to plug that back in for u. That u has just been a placeholder for me, a very convenient, wonderful, lovely placeholder. That integral is done. A few more examples like this. I notice I have z squared minus 5 inside a square root. This is the key, right, to find like a function inside another function. So I'm going to let u equal that part that's inside the other function, z squared minus 5. So du that must be equal 2z dz. Oh, but wait. I have a dz, but I also have a z. But I, I, to do my substitution, I need it to match exactly. So what I think I'm going to do then is I know that if I took a half of this, I would have, that would get rid of that too, so I'd have that uh, z dz that I need. So this must be half of du. So in place of the z dz, I'm going to put a half du. So let me do this substitution then. Um, I've got square root of u and times a half dz. Okay, so that's just the integral of one half the square root of u. Uh, oh, sorry, du. Du. That one half is just a constant uh, multiplier, so I can pull it out. So I'm good with that. Uh, derivative of something to the one half power, right? This is to the one half power. One half times, uh, I keep saying derivative, sorry, integral. One half would have come from three halves, and I multiply by two thirds for that. So this would be, those twos cancel out. One third u to the three halves plus c. Great. Here it is. u is z squared minus five. So I have one third z squared minus five. See, you write it that way, uh, you know, your book might write it like this. Same thing. So sometimes we have to compensate. Like if we don't, so if we don't get a, an exact match, like we did here, we're going to have to multiply by some constant to get that match so we can substitute. So looking at this one, I see I have x cubed plus 5 inside the 9. So I'm going to let u equal that part. So if I take the derivative of that, uh, 3x squared dx, I've got the dx. I want this just to be an x squared, so how about I multiply both sides by a third. Now I can do my substitution. This x squared dx gets replaced by a one-third du. u gets replaced by uh, x cubed plus 5. So I have u to the ninth and a third du. Let's see, the derivative of u to the ninth, that would have come from u to the tenth, and I need a one-tenth to take care of that. Uh, so this would be one-thirtieth u to the tenth plus c, but u is x cubed plus five, so I might write this as x cubed plus five to the tenth over 30. So looking at this next one, I have integral uh, sine t over cosine squared t dt. And you, might, you, know, you might not see it right away what to do, but a clue is that I have cosine inside squaring. So let's see what happens if we, if we do that. So I'm going to let you, my little placeholder, be cosine. So that derivative then, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And so there's my sign. I have that piece, um, but it's negative. So how about I negate both sides? So d, negative du, like negative 1 times du, is sine t dt. It's great. So this part can get replaced with my negative 1 du, and then this is u squared. Right, like cosine is u, so this is a u squared in the bottom. 
this is essentially a negative 1 du. That might get written as negative du over u squared. It's the same thing. So we have a negative u to the negative 2 du. We know how to do that. Um, this would have, we still have that negative. This would have come from a negative 1. So that would have a negative 1 over there plus some constant. Negative negative is positive. So this should be uh, u to the negative 1 plus c, which is 1 over u plus c, and u is cosine. That's where that one would have come from. Again, uh, you know, if you're like, kind of feel like you're just jumping through steps, or you're not sure what to do, do a couple, and each time you do it, um, undo it. Like take the derivative of this and see where the pieces lead you back to that by using that chain rule. This is really like we're undoing the chain rule. So taking a look at this one, um, I've got x over the square root of x squared minus 1. That x squared minus 1 is in a square root, so let's, that's a pretty good candidate for our u. So the derivative of that would be uh, 2x dx. That's not bad. We've got, uh, we've got an x dx. So how about we say then half of du would equal x dx. Now we can do our substitution. Um, we got our, our one half. We've got our x dx. So that gives our du. And we've got one over the square root of u. So this uh, negative one half would have come from a one half. Sorry. Uh, this would have come from a u to the one half power. But then we need to offset it by doing that. 2 times a half is 1, so we've got u to the 1 half power plus c. And u is x squared minus 1, so this would be the square root of x squared minus 1 plus some constant. Right, that's to the 1 half power square root. So there's that idea with doing those. Um, I want to apply this idea to some definite integrals or at least one definite integral. So notice that this is the same idea, but now we're gonna evaluate it at the end. And there's really kind of two ways to go about doing this. I'll do one way that's a little brute forcey, and the second way is a little more elegant. I want you to try and push yourself to it. So thinking about this, I'm gonna let u be this thing that's taken to the fifth power. And its derivative then would be, what, 6x squared uh, dx. But I only have an x squared, so I need a sixth of it. And now if I substitute this on in, I'm going to hold off, because I've, I've just, I'm putting it in u, so these values aren't actually, I'm not really evaluating it from 0, 1. I'm just going to do the integral, then substitute it back, and then deal with the numbers. So again, this is a way to do it. This is a way to, it's, it's, I think it's a little more clumsy than the other way. But let me do this. Um, I've got 1 sixth du, right? That took the place of x squared dx. And then u, this is u to the, oh, this would be sixth integral u to the fifth. So this would be 1 36th u to the sixth power, and then now, um, oh yeah, plus c. But I'm not going to worry about the plus c because I'm going to end up evaluating. Um, it's a definite integral. So now I'm going to put this back in because that's what u is. So this would be 1 plus 2x to the third to the sixth power times the 36th. And then now that I have that back in, now I can evaluate that from 0 to 1. I might write it this way. It might be easier to write. So notice I can plug the 1 in. So I have 1 plus 2 times 1 cubed to the 6 over 36 minus plug the 0 in. 1 plus 2 times 0 cubed to the 6th over 36. And I shove that in my calculator and I get like about 20.2. So this is one way to do it. 
it's a little um, so here's the here's a the other way it's almost exactly the same but what we what we do different is we actually take care of this here so let's do the substitution again and, and see where we where it leads to. Um, same idea right same substitution let u equals 1 plus 2x cubed derivative of that this you know this I don't know why I'm rewriting all this just because I love to write and now when we do this when we plug that u into there we're still going to end up with this 1 sixth um, u to the fifth du but now what we're doing is we're, we're doing this integral in terms of of u so when it was in terms of x x this was when x was one and x was uh, zero and x was one what we can do is we can plug those values into u and we don't have to worry about substituting um, back the x of that thing back in so if i plug zero into u notice that like u of zero one plus two uh, one plus zero is one so this is gonna now run from one i, I had that backwards sorry u of zero to u of one if i plug in u of zero I get my one. If I plug in u of one, this is one plus two times one cubed is three. So notice what we've done is we, we took this and we said, what is the u value when x is zero? Oh, it's one. What is the u value when x is one? Oh, it's three. And so now we don't have to substitute back um, in terms of x. So now we can go do this integral again. We know we end up with. 136 u to the sixth, but we can just run it straight from three to one. So I think this is a lot more elegant of a way to do it. Um, when you do the substitution, you also substitute in those values for that boundary. That boundary changes from zero to one to what those u values are, right? U of zero, u of one. You're plugging them in, you're plugging those x values in and then those become your new boundaries. And then from here, we just have um, three to the six over 36 minus one to the six over 36. Much easier to evaluate, I think, and we get that same answer, which is uh, the 20.2 repeat. Okay, so there is some work with uh, substitution. Get that practice in. Like I said, if you're feeling like it's kind of rough, um, after you get an answer, take its derivative and it should kick you back to the original. You'll kind of see where the pieces come from. Send me any questions you have, uh, post them in the forum or message me.